Just over a year ago, I deposited $20,000 into my first crypto account. As of today, it's now worth $1.7 million. Now this wasn't just some string of luck. If you don't know who I am, I was a professional day trader in the stock market for 17 years. I took all those skills that I learned and transferred them into the crypto market. But here's the catch. My account should be at $5 million today. The problem is I made some completely idiotic, overzealous mistakes, such as shorting a million dollars worth of Bitcoin, getting absolutely screwed over. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video, the complete timeline from when I opened my account to today, all the good trades, all the bad trades and everything between. So let's get it. You got to pump it up. Don't you know, pump it up. You got to pump it up. Hit it. From making millions of dollars as a day trader for 15 years and now mentoring students who are making $18,000 in a day to making millions running an online course and coaching business and now mentoring students who are making $70,000 per month. I know how to make money online, but it's time to give back. So I'm going to give away over $10,000 worth of my online day trading and entrepreneur courses for absolutely free. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and I'll be running a small budget of advertisements retargeting people who subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now and be on the lookout for that secret advertisement that will give you access to all my programs for free. All right, guys, it's going to be an interesting video today and probably a long one. And I also just want to say that today it's Saturday, but hopefully by the time my editor finishes this, it's Monday, which is Cyber Monday. And we just did a Black Friday sale. I believe all the coupon codes are gone by now. But for specifically this video, we're going to do a Cyber Monday sale with just a limited 25 promo codes left. If you use the code MONDAY below on the link to the checkout, you're gonna get access to my Krypton day trading course. We're gonna learn everything I know about trading in general over the last 17, 18 years of my career and how I turned 20K into $1.7 million. You're gonna get the course on exactly how I did that. Code below. Monday, let's get to it. But now let's get back to the video. So if we look at my coin stats, which is a really cool program, it's an online portfolio tracker software. So it logs into your account for you and then tracks your performance across all your holdings, whether it be your decentralized wallets, your centralized exchanges, you can add basically any portfolio inside of here. So a really cool program. And so this is also just showing you that it's proof that this is actually my portfolio that's being here. I'm not just making up numbers. So you can see it's 1.6 million now today because the markets did just take a massive dump yesterday. As you can see here on the chart, Ethereum just took a massive poo-poo right on the bull's face. Bam, right in the forehead. They didn't like that. So that just happens sometimes. And it's very normal to see pullbacks like this. I did get shaved off about a $150,000 off the top of my portfolio. You can see we spiked out yesterday, 1.745. And then today it's now $1.6 million on the account. Basically what we're going to talk about today is kind of the timeline of when I opened up my first trading account back in July of 2020. Brief interruption from today's sponsor, which is none other than CoinStats, an all-in-one platform for managing all your crypto and DeFi assets, whether you got your Binance, MetaMask, Coinbase. When you have your money in so many different places, it's hard to see how much money you're actually making and actually track your performance. And understanding your data, if you are actually good at trading or not, is very important. And oddly enough, CoinStats is what we're using and talking about in all of today's video. So it's actually a really cool platform that connects all of your portfolios into one trusty little spot to check out what you're doing, such as we've been looking at this my equity curve of $1.6 million starting at $20,000. It's actually extremely affordable. A pro monthly paid annually price of just $349 or the premium subscription of $1399. Extremely affordable. I definitely think it's worth a small investment. So you can start tracking all of your portfolio in addition to see what's going on with individual trades, such as me making $245,000 on mana. But I traded it at multiple spots. Okay, you can see Binance, I lost 59 cents on it because I don't remember when that was. Kraken FX, right? My Kraken account, I made $191,000 on it. And on KuCoin, I made $53,000 on it. So cool to see all of your trades on one easy to follow platform and see exactly how you're performing across your entire crypto portfolio because I know most of you have your money in multiple places. But anyways, that's CoinStats. Thanks to our sponsor. I definitely think it's worth the small investment to be able to manage your portfolio from everywhere. Now, before this, if you're following me on YouTube, you'll know, you'll see all my videos pri- previously were about the stock market. And then I retired in 2018 because I was just absolutely sick of trading. I've been doing it for 15 years. I was living in Bali where the stock market opens at 9.30 and 10.30 p.m. I was fucking miserable. So I basically quit for almost two years. Then coronavirus happened and I started dabbling back in the stock market. And then I realized and remembered again why I fucking hate it because I can't stand trading at night. And then all of a sudden I started seeing crypto start moving. And then I made my first 
crypto video in October of 2020. You can see here, pro stock trader versus crypto. I learned how to trade Bitcoin and I did make $30,000 in my first 30 days. And I was like, holy shit, these actually move kind of like the stock market. Problem was I did lose all that 30K in the next 30 days. So it was, I was in, I was out. And I was like, well, that fucking sucks. But the thing that I noticed is that all the kind of tactics that I was using to make money in the stock market was very similar to basically this, the supply and demand and price action in crypto. So that's when I kind of just started going balls deep in crypto. And I didn't really just like throw a bunch of money at it. I was like, okay, I'll open an account with 20K and just see how it goes. And very quickly that 20K turned into a six figure account. And once I had six figures in my account, that's when it became much, much easier to start making 50 to 100,000 to upwards of $400,000 months in my portfolio. I also learned how volatile crypto can be. It is way more volatile than the stock market. And just as easy as you can double and triple your account, you can lose half of it in just a few weeks very, very easily as well, as we'll see when we go over my portfolio. So let's just take a look. As you can see, I just went off on a tear on making YouTube content based around crypto. So really kind of the first thing that I started getting into was XRP. That was kind of like my first like big win in trading. If we look back at my Kraken account back when this all started, it would be nice to be starting to buy, you know, XRP like I was back here at 18 and 20 cents. So you could see me just loading up on XRP down in these levels here, bought more here, bought more, bought more, bought more. And then I figured out after my first time trading crypto is that there was a 28 day window for holding leverage on your account. So you can only hold a position for 28 days if you're using leverage and Kraken. Then all of a sudden I was like, why, why are all my fucking positions being sold? And then so Kraken was selling all my positions for me, <laughs> which sucks because I was like, now I'm taking losses on it because it had been over 28 days on my account. And so the ones that I did have on leverage, which were the ones that I fucking bought higher, of course, automatically sold out. And I believe some are there. This is when I still had a pretty sizable position, but only cash, no more leverage. And and XRP when this thing just absolutely blew up and it blew up because it was in a kryptonite pattern and kryptonite patterns are something that I teach inside of the Krypton course and which is something that I also taught for almost two decades in the stock market. So a lot of the principles that I used in the stock market now work way better in crypto than they actually do in the stock market because one, it's a new market. There was less, you know, algorithms, less hedge funds. The stock market is very manipulated and it's a lot harder to make money today than it was in 2005 when I started. Crypto is still kind of a new industry in the fact that it's just not completely as saturated as a stock market is. So things were moving a lot cleaner than they were in the stock market. The big disaster that ended up happening here on XRP is one, after I saw this massive gain, I'm like, okay, I gotta lock in some profits. We were in down here at 17 to 20 cents locked in gains on XRP. And this is when I kind of took the 20K and then turned it quickly into about 80 to 90K, I think. But I didn't sell all of it. So then this kind of came back down real quick. I bought the dip, bought the dip again, sold, bought the dip again. And then this was when the SEC news came out. And I decided to just rapidly sell there because I didn't want to be part of this. And then everything just kind of ate shit. I bought the dip again here, sold, then sold. And then I started buying the dip again here. And the funny thing is, as soon as I started talking about on YouTube that I sold, this is when I got the first taste of how tribal and psychotic the world and community is of crypto. This is when I decided that I fucking hate the crypto community. All the hate that I got for me saying I sold XRP. I was like, listen, I fucking made a great trade. The SEC is fucking suing them. So I sold for a fucking profit and you guys are all in a massive loss. The thing is, people choose their team in crypto. And if you say anything bad about their fucking team, it's like politics. It's like sports. They lose their fucking shit and they're ready to fucking fight. It's so fucking weird to me how tribal this is. All these fucking loser motherfucking cunts is what I think of the crypto community. Yeah, there's some great people in there, some very smart and intelligent people in there. But for the majority, a lot of the crypto community is people that have no trading experience, no knowledge of this. All they think about is just how great their project is and that this project is going to make them rich. So if you say anything opposing to the scenario or narrative that they're getting rich off this, they lose their fucking shit. It was interesting to see how fucking crazy the crypto community as actually was, especially the XRP army fucking loser squad. Listen, I got fucking almost $300,000 still in XRP, but I don't give a fuck about the community, okay? I'm in it for myself. What you do with your money, I could fucking care less. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm getting mad just thinking about it. But that was the introduction into the mass craziness of the crypto community. But then I started buying the dip on XRP and I started buying some more. But after I started buying here, this is when I started looking at other crypto exchanges and then moved my money in my XRP position off of Kraken and started getting into decentralized finance a little bit. And, start, and then I started loading up big and big and big because we were forming up another Krypton pattern. And then we saw that massive run up. And up here, I was up almost $400,000 on XRP. What did I do? I didn't sell a single fucking thing because I decided, hey, Cam, 
let's try this whole hodl thing all these losers are talking about guess what happened absolutely nothing i gave back the complete four hundred thousand dollar profit that sucked but then I started buying back down here, bought again here, and then I sold XRP up here, and that's where I made most of my money on XRP. As you can see, the total profit, all-time profit, was $150,000. This should be like $600,000 on XRP. I just decided to change my strategy into this hot old fucking character for some reason. I don't know why, after I was up $400,000 on it. Don't ask me, I make mistakes all the time as well. Why I said my account should be at like 5 million today and said it's at 1.6, which is still pretty fucking good from 20,000. So that was kind of the whole XRP debacle. And I still have 261,000 coins of XRP, which is about 250, about a quarter million dollars still in XRP, because I do still think that they could potentially win the SEC case. When that does happen, it's probably going to 5 to $10 per coin. But who knows? Maybe they fucking lose. I'll sell it, walk away, and move on to the next trade. So that was the kind of XRP position. But we had a lot of other big trades in the beginning of me first initially opening my account. Okay, like another Krypton pattern was DOT. We were getting in at 5. I sold, stopped out, and then I bought again 534, 550. And that was when DOT just went on an absolute tear here. But I obviously sold early, as we can see on DOT. When I was buying in here, that looked like a great trade. I bought here, bought at five. Next thing you know, I'm up almost 100%. So this is what it looks like at this point. I'm like, okay, I'm locking in my fucking gains. Then people go, why'd you fucking sell? Who's gonna go to the fucking moon? Shut the fuck up. You don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I can't predict the future, can you? No, you can't. So that is when I sold here and here for about almost a double on dot. And then this thing just went on an absolute tear. So this was just kind of like a, a intro into being like, okay, some of these things can fucking pump and you can make a lot of fucking money if you have the patience to hold through it, which I don't. I'm a day trader by trade. That's what I've always been in trying to go for this long-term position usually bites me in the ass and I regret not taking my profits. So that was the dot trade. Then there was also Dogecoin, which I was getting at 0.00493325. Then next thing you know, this thing was just absolutely ripping. Okay. Look at this 0.004925. Then I sold at 0.0654. And then 0 0.007663, you can see my buys and sells over here. So that was an awesome trade on Dogecoin, just continually, you know, taking the gains that I had from XRP and then compounding those into a new position. It's hard for people to kind of comprehend the idea of day trading versus hodling. So say if you had, you know, $100 and then you bought into a coin at $5 and then it flipped to $10, you just doubled your account. So then that $100 is $200. In order for that to double again, that same coin has to make another 100% move from $10 to $20, which is a lot less likely than going to find a new coin that may be on the verge of making another 100% move. So that's the way I look at it. I'm always looking at, okay, I'm going to take my quick gains out of these massive positions that run up, right? Because once something doubles or triples, the likelihood of it now at this new higher price, double and triple again from there is probably less probable than taking a profit after double or tripling your money. It just makes a lot more sense to uh, flip and try to find the next opportunity. But as you can see, Look at this, just absolute insanity. And this was just kind of my first taste of like, oh shit, crypto's absolutely insane, right? You don't see this in the stock market ever. So that's why this was my biggest year ever in crypto because we saw these kind of moves, okay? And imagine being in Dogecoin and then having that up there, all right? This is the fucking fantasy that everybody lives by and the, that fantasy of like, oh, if you would have bought Dogecoin fucking four years ago and then still hold it today, you'd be a fucking millionaire. That's the fantasy and that's what gets everybody involved in crypto. The fact is that never fucking happens, okay? Do you ever hear story? Do you know anybody that does that? Do you know anybody that actually went through that story? Because I fucking don't. It doesn't exist because it's just a fantasy. And living and trading by that fantasy is usually what's going to lead to you actually losing because you never fucking sell for profits. And then you never make any money if you never lock in any gains, okay? That was the Dogecoin trade. And then there was also Ethereum. We started buying down in here at 332, 350, started buying more at 580, 614. I stopped out for some of it at 570. Then I started buying more and more and more and up here and then sold all for profits up about 1316 after buying in uh, pretty low down in the 300s. Now, obviously, Ethereum has this fucking absolutely ripped for 1,000, then came back up here. Again, there was also Uniswap that we got in really early and nicely. This was another kryptonite pattern that we were getting in 380. 83, selling, 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 selling. 13, then this thing ripped up the 13. Now it's haven't really done much at all since then. So that was kind of like the first, like, I think 20K to, you know, six figures in my account that happened pretty quickly. And we can see it on the chart here back in October or July was when I got my first 20K in my account. And then I think I turned it into about 50. And then that was when I lo lost it all afterwards, then went back down to about 16. And then this is the XRP move. Then all of a sudden by January, it just went, you know, 70 quickly to 150. And then all of a sudden just ramping quickly up to about 600. And this was, I believe right around, I remember it was the 
Jake Paul first boxing fight. And then that was when everything just absolutely ate shit. And this was also another crazy shit fuck situation. I had a Binance account at the time. It was when I called the top on Ethereum. I did an Instagram post when uh, Norbert, if we can pop up a pop up there, when I said counting down the ticking time bomb on Ethereum at 4,000 prior to this actually happening, right? And so I was heavily short on Ethereum right here. I was actually down in Uluwatu with some friends. Uh, my account was at all time highs. I believe the actual balance, I think this is the locked in profits here, but my balance was like 850,000 in my account. So I went from 20 K to about 850,000 or so in my account at this point in April of 2020. And then, but I think not showing the open profits that I had, which is why I'm not sure coin stats sometimes did some weird things, which is also right here. We'll talk about here, but it was about 850,000 in my account, but I had a lot of open positions. And then I lost about 150 to 200,000 in about a day or two days, maybe after all my altcoins just dumped like 30 to 40% on these days right here. And when Ethereum was dropping, you know, 10 to 20 for percent in a day, the altcoins were dropping like 30% plus, And I have six figure positions plus on all those, which means a 20 to 30% decline is, you know, 20 to 30% decline in that position. And my account was fully loaded at that point. Right. So to lose 20 to 30% of 800, 50k it was a quick like 200 grand off the top of my account just instantly just like that i was also heavily short ethereum and made i think about 100 grand on this big washout and then i covered it right here and then this is where things got really fucking shitty for me because <laughs> after this big washout right here i was basically cleared out of all my long positions and i just locked in my short gain on ethereum and then we saw this massive massive dip right here on Ethereum. And I started buying the dip on Ethereum at about 2,700 right here at the 50 day moving average. After that 50 day moving average, there was another massive fucking sell off under 2000. And so rather than stopping buying the dip here or stopping out, I continued to buy the dip all the way throughout this point right here. Cause I knew there was gonna be a massive bounce. You can't have a, a big washout like that without a massive bounce. And that massive bounce did come, okay? So it would appear that I would have actually made a really solid trade because I was buying the dip heavily throughout this whole period of the dip. And then it next day I would have cashed out for a nice profit. But here's the problem. Binance, you fucking cunts. I was buying ETH up because I thought, you know what, Kim, let's buy a fucking ETH up because Ethereum might move 10%, but ETH up will move 30% instead. So I'm going to make a lot more money by buying the dip on ETH up. Okay. But I did start buying the dip at about 240 here on ETH up and I continued buying the dip and it just kept fucking dropping. It was dropping fucking fast. Okay. And I kept buying the dip, buying the dip all the way down to about $42, I think was my last dip buy and dropped to a low of $23. Okay. This was a disaster for me. I got myself into a sticky situation because I started buying all the way up here and just kept buying the dip. And I was like, Oh, this has to fucking bounce. And so it wasn't a good trade from the get go. But the problem is Binance decided, let's halt. Let's halt this motherfucker. So Binance decided, hey, we're going to halt ETH up down here. And guess what happened? Guess what happened? Ethereum did bounce all the way back up to about here, okay? In the case of if ETH up would have been replicating the move on ETH up and what ETH actually was doing, it should have bounced like 270, 280%, but it didn't. Binance halted fucking trading for the entirety of the Ethereum bounce. And then as finally, when it opened up for trading again, it didn't do shit. It stayed back down here and then completely never recovered ever. And so I lost like a hundred to $150,000 just instantly, just like that, because Binance decided to halt trading on ETH up. And after that, my mind state, after getting about 200,000 shaved off the top for my altcoin positions on these massive dumps. And then I was feeling a little bit better because I made like a hundred to 150 K going short Ethereum heavily. I was like, okay, that's nice. I feel good making back some of it. And then I just got completely destroyed on this fluke of a trade because I also didn't really understand how the leverage works on these uh, triple leveraged stupid coins that Binance has. I don't recommend trading the ETH up or down or BTC up or down at all. Stay away. Tell Binance to go fuck themselves is all I have to say about that. <laughs> and so after that, my mindset wasn't good. And you can see my account going from, you know, 560, which was actually about 850. So I, I don't know why CoinStats is doing this, but it was about 850 here. And then you can see it dropped all the way down to 420 real quick. And then I bounced back. Things got a little hectic. And you can see I slowly bled profits throughout this whole period. Okay. Down to about 215, about July, 2021, which wasn't too long ago. Right. So for a while there, I just wasn't trading good. My mindset wasn't good. I couldn't recover from 
my bullshit. And what I'm gonna do in the following video after this is talk about the top 10 lessons that I learned throughout this entire year and a half of trading and turning 20K into 1.6 million now. But throughout this whole period, I kept trying to buy the dip, kept trying to short these tops, buy the dip, just trading random fucking patterns. And the thing that I realized, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing is I wasn't trading any pattern that I know works, right? Inside the Krypton system, the thing that I actually teach, there's basically four patterns that happen over and over again. And those are the ones that I make all my fucking money on. And during this entirety of this entire length here through this bear market phase, there wasn't any Krypton patterns, but I was like, okay, I run a fucking YouTube channel. I have zero content. So I need to trade to try to make something up. I have over 2000 people in my Telegram group who are paying. I need to give them something to feast on. And so I continue to trade regardless of there being absolutely no fucking trade opportunities, which was really stupid on my part, right? I'm not gonna say that I'm smart. I have a lot of experience, but I had this like, clash of like, I need to make YouTube content. So I need to trade and try to make something happen. And I also have a bunch of people who are paying me in Telegram and they're all complaining that I'm not making any trades. I'm going to go try to find some fucking trades when there was no fucking trades going forward. I learned my lesson and know that that's just a completely idiotic way to do things. If there's no fucking trading opportunities and realistically, probably more than half the year, Krypton patterns don't exist. I would have been much better off not trading at all. My account would probably be about $5 million right now. If I would have took more than half the year off when there was no Krypton patterns formed up. Because I would have been able to just be stress-free, relaxed, not doing any trading, go do something else. I do, I'm involved in real estate now. I have another big project going on. Just work on other shit. And that's something that you should do as well. If there's no good setups, like trading environment is everything. And a lot of people, the problem is we make a bunch of money on these runs and then we think the same kind of patterns and performance replication that happened in here is gonna keep happening through here. And it just doesn't. You might as well just take this fucking whole entire time off. If any time Bitcoin is below the 50 day moving average, unless you're buying extreme dips, trying to buy breakouts or be super bullish on anything, it's probably not gonna turn out too well. And right now we're in that same situation. Yeah, I bought some dips and this was actually a unique situation which we'll get into right now that the metaverse coins and gaming coins still ripped regardless of Bitcoin dropping right here, right? Cause we just fucking absolutely crushed it on uh, the gaming and metaverse coins because they were all in Krypton patterns. But other than that, other than these massive, like I just bought the dip here, but to try to buy like breakout coins, they're all gonna be failed. There any spike right now, a lot of them are gonna be like, okay, I need to get the fuck out of these positions because I'm fucking scared. And so most spikes are actually just turn into profit taking and then potential selling or panic selling like we just saw again today with a massive dump in about $150,000 shaved off my portfolio through here because I do actually now have a, a HODL portfolio. I have a day trading account, which is about $700,000. And then I have a HODL account, which is currently at about $600,000. And then I have another HODL position in XRP, which is about $250,000. And then I also have a Phantom Wallet with Star Atlas, which is about $134,000. So I have money kind of in different places. And I wanted to separate my HODL account from my day trading account. Cause if all of a sudden I'm HODLing positions and I'll send that drops like $40,000 in a day, I don't want to look at my day trading balance and think I just lost $40,000. Cause that's going to fuck with my head. Everything in trading has to do with keeping your head in a positive space, right? When my head wasn't in a positive space, I just, after losing this money and then getting fucked over by Binance, I just continue to try to trade through this to try to recover my money. And the end trading environment was not there. And I was trading patterns that didn't fucking work that I wasn't familiar with and I lost a bunch of fucking more money. Then we finally broke out of the wedge pattern here. And that's another thing that I started noticing rather than trying to buy these extreme dips or like thinking that everything's, oh, the, here's a pattern. Wait for wedge pattern breakouts because that's when you actually see the next run up, right? We saw the wedge pattern breakout. That's when things ran up. We saw the wedge pattern breakout. That's when things ran up. So now again, I'm waiting for the wedge pattern breakout to be active again with my day trading, unless I'm buying extreme dips to, to trade the bounce off. Here's the problem. When we saw this massive run right here, I didn't make any money going long other than my XRP position that I was still holding that I was up $400,000 on. And then we saw it uh, run up. That kind of saved my portfolio that I hodled that account because otherwise I didn't take advantage of any of this going long because by the time we did break out of this wedge pattern, I had traded so many times throughout here making stupid fucking idiotic decisions and my account just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. I had no mental capacity to have the confidence to try to buy the dip again or buy any breakouts once they actually formed up because my mindset was just screwed at this point. And so there was a bunch of awesome patterns that blew up right here. Like TWT I was watching and this thing freaking blew up. Twit down here, perfect revival breakout pattern, 36 cents ripped up. 
Sand was another one that blew up off the lows that I was watching. I was super bullish on sand. Down here, broke out, and then things just started fucking pumping. And there was no dip opportunities, right? Once they started, they just didn't stop. And my mind state wasn't fucking clear enough to actually buy the dip on anything. But this is when I started shorting again, okay? And I crushed it on sand. I made like 20, 30 grand here on sand short. I made like another 20 grand here on sand short. Speaking of which, Decrypton, the new shorting course is dropping in about two weeks. I am super excited to drop the shorting course because there's a lot of money to be made on shorting. And even if you don't want to short, I recommend watching this course because it's going to teach you when you should sell because it's going to teach you if you bought something to go long on, it's going to teach you to identify when people are going to start shorting this thing and things are actually going to come and eat shit. And you're going to be like, oh, fuck, I should have sold there. This is an area where people are probably going to start shorting this thing and start pushing price action down. So throughout this whole period, on Bitcoin ramping up here, I was a shorting, okay? And if we look at my YouTube videos, you can see I was short Bitcoin, okay? $116,000 going short. I made like another 30K profit going short XRP, okay? So I made a decent amount of money going short throughout this entire period uh, right here. And then here is where things got real disastrous because I did make a bunch of money going short right here and I made more money going short right here and I made more money going short right here. But then as of right here, I'm thinking, okay, we're in a bearish pattern right here. And I got a little too bearish, all right? And I was thinking, okay, bouncing off the wedge pattern, break down, sitting at the 1320 and nine EMAs, we're gonna see another dip. We're gonna come down to 30K. So I was thinking a little bit too bearishly at this point. And I got short about three, I think about 250 to $300,000 leveraged in futures in Bitcoin, right around here, 44,000. And then just boom, boom, boom. Here, I lost about $150,000 going short Bitcoin which then, right, I made good money going right here on my XRP recovery, and then also making a bunch of money going short uh, throughout this process here. I just gave it all back. Gave it all right fucking back, okay? <laughs> this fucking sucked. I'll show you in my Qcoin Futures account. Bear with me, folks. So you can see this is when disaster struck. I closed out my Bitcoin short here for negative $58,000. That was on October 4th. October 5th, I tried to short it again, negative 17,000. October 5th, I decided to short it again, negative $7,000. And by this point, I am so desperate to make my money back. I'm shorting a million dollars worth of Bitcoin, looking for my big break to make all my money back. And guess what? Negative $82,000. <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, fuck, Cam, because here's what happened, right? I was short right here and I wasn't using a stop. I was sitting there on the couch with my girlfriend and we were watching a fucking movie and I'm up like maybe like $10,000 on my position short as of right now. I'm like, okay, things are good. Bitcoin's gonna bounce off this fucking resistance level. It's gonna dump. I'm gonna make, you know, like 50 to 100 grand going down here on Bitcoin. I'm excited, right? Next thing you know, within like five minutes of me not checking my phone, Bitcoin spikes 4,000 points, instant like $50,000 loss on my account. And it spiked 4,000 points in like under five minutes. So I don't know, I don't remember what fucking happened right here, but it was an instant $50,000 loss on my position. I was like, okay, Gam, you, you son of a bitch. And at that point, again, my mindset is this turns into this fucking complete idiotic mode. I need to make my money back, which, you know, I'm not a perfect trader. I make mistakes all the fucking time as well. At this point, I'm not thinking clearly. And so I started upping my position size, which was about 250,000 at the first trade. And I'm like, okay, now I'm gonna do a $500,000 position trade. Nope, I get spiked at again, $17,000. Okay, another $500,000, but I keep my stop tight. Okay, $7,000. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going a million dollars short in Bitcoin. This thing's fucking dumping. Nope. I'm short about a million dollars of Bitcoin at this next supply zone. Thinking, okay, we're back up the supply zone. It's going to spike out slightly over about 53K. People are going to get faked out. It's going to be a bull trap, and this thing's going to absolutely get annihilated here. Wrong, Cam. Again, as soon as this broke out all-time high, it instantly spoke, spiked from about 53,000, uppers to about 55, about 2,000 points just like that, and I'm instantly down like 80 grand on that short position. <laughs> so that fucking sucked. And at that point, I said, you know what, Cam? Okay, you're being completely idiotic. None of these trades are trades that you would normally make, nor are they like in superb patterns that you even teach. What is your fucking problem, right? So sometimes as traders, we become desperate for revenge trading. And sometimes, you know, revenge trading is a fucking killer. It'll blow your account up, right? My account wasn't at risk of being blown up at this point, but it was at a point where I was losing a lot of gains. All the gains that I just had made from this awesome run, my XRP bouncing and making a bunch of money short, I just gave it all back. Now I'm back to fucking square one, break even. Now I'm thinking, okay, I got to start fucking over. After I just recovered, right? I had an awesome run, fucking Binance bullshit. 
then about another 150 to 200 thousand dollar losses and just idiotic trades down here then the fucking run happens my mindset is fucked can't think straight then bitcoin's ripping and never fucking stops i'm pissed so i start shorting the shit out of everything and i make a bunch of money and then i short the shit out of everything again and then bitcoin spikes 4000 points and i'm instantly lost $50,000 and that just triggers a whole chain of events where then i lose another you know 100 grand real quick <laughs> and then it wasn't till about i believe right around somewhere in here where all of a sudden you know the metaverse coins and i got really really bullish on the metaverse that came in strong was one which i think that's on my uh, uh, futures account so you can see i did recover uh 34000 going short Ethereum. Then I had like a forty thousand dollar trade. Soul. I got screwed over on sand. Forty k on one. So these are the futures. It doesn't track um, my spot trades, of which where I make most of my money is actually on spot futures. Are a little crazy because you get leverage. But you can see going from a two fifteen spiking up, doubling it back to 450, 509, then bringing it all the way back up to about eight fifty, eight seventy. And what I don't understand it right here, and all of a sudden just spikes up almost a million dollars in my account. So I just opened up coin stats this is for the first time ever. They're actually the sponsor, one of the sponsors of this video. So I need to talk to him, ask him what's going on. Because as far as the balances go in my account, it's all correct. I do have $1.6 million in my account. But as far as the performance tracking right here with this spike, as I added in different wallets, for some, some reason, it's not tracking correctly. Overall, right? This was crazy. You can see my move on uh, mana. This is one of our best trades for the metaverse, me getting in on mana, buying in 30,000 coins at 84 cents, 10,000 at 97, another 15,000 at 98. And I locked in profits at about 381, 407, 495, and 481. This is actually in my HODL account, which is a different account than my day trading account. Let me just break this down about what this actually is. So I started out with $20,000 in Kraken, my personal portfolio uh, for just personal trading in July of 2020. And then earlier this year, October 27th, I believe it was, what did I say on Twitter? So as you can see on October 27th, this was also contributing to the $1.6 million. I deposited another $250,000 into a corporate account, which is basically under the entity of my business. So of that 1.6 million, there's an additional $250,000 that I deposited. And then I turned that $250,000 quickly into $600,000 in that account, if we can look at my account here. And then, so this is 250,000 plus an additional 150,000. So I deposited 400,000 into my business Business account, which is now at 605,000. So there's about a $205,000 profit, mostly from mana on this, but also from Solana. You can see the the positions that I currently in, Mana, Solana, Engine, Polkadot, Polygon, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Dogecoin. In total, the deposits were about $20,000 initially, and then about $400,000 into a business account. So that's $420,000 deposit. That's shaving off $420,000 off the top of this $1.6 million, which I believe is what 20,000 to about $1.25,000 with the addition of $400,000 that helped me make an additional $200,000 on top of that. It's November 27th. It's been one month since I deposited the $400,000. Okay. So almost all the money that I made for the most part in here, other than the big trade on mana was through actively day trading the Krypton strategy and also day trading the Krypton strategy on mana. So we'll see how the HODL account actually turns out, right? Because technically when I'm looking at it as longer term positions, which is really fucking weird to me to hold something longer term. We'll see. I, it's debatable whether it's going to work out good for me or not. Okay. But I am locking in profits on the way, just like you saw, I was locking in profits in on the mana position. It's been an interesting fucking year. Okay. And I, I, I lost a lot of fucking money. I made a lot of really stupid trades and still I have $1.6 million in my account. albeit there's a $20,000 deposit plus the $400,000 deposit. That's still $1.2 million in money that I didn't used to have. Okay. And it's been just over a year since I started trading crypto. Obviously I was 17 years in the stock market. So I have a lot of experience, which is why I want to tell you about the Krypton system and the decrypton system, because I can teach you a lot. But in the next video, I'm going to go over the top 10 lessons that I did learn and lessons that are going to be extremely valuable to you going forward in your crypto trading, because if I'm 17 years deep in trading and I'm still making completely idiotic mistakes like this, I can only imagine the kind of stupid mistakes you guys are making that have zero experience in trading at all. Trading is such an emotional roller coaster that completely tests 
your discipline. It completely tests your mind like no other thing has ever done before. And it's so easy to get wrapped up in this shit and make completely idiotic mistakes or buy into someone else's opinion or join some Telegram group and you're they're telling you this fucking coin is going to go to $100 and it's sitting at a half of a penny. It has to fucking the, a billion X to get there, but they're all in there telling you it's going to do it. So it spikes 500% and then you never lock in any profits and then you're now negative on your position. There's just so many things that can go wrong in trading. It's ridiculous. It's extremely easy to lose money in the trading industry across the board. About 95 to 98% of traders fail in the long term. I want to teach you guys how to do this properly. And you can see I still make mistakes. I'm still human. I still fuck up all the time, but I still had an amazing year, the best year I've ever had in my trading career. And I started trading in 2005. But anyways, guys, this is a long video. I don't know how long this has actually been. Uh, hopefully you stuck through that and I kind of rambled a lot, but there's a lot of different things that happen and other big trades that fucking we crushed it on were sand getting in early UOS. We alerted at 76 cents is now at 220. Atlas. We started buying at 78 cents, started buying at 91 cents, ripped all the way up to 21 wild. We were in super early down here at the 150 mark. It ripped all the way up to seven. Ascenso. We were in early at about 85 cents before this thing ripped up to 2323. 23. PBX. We were in super early on PBX down here at about 16 cents, ripping all the way up to about four cents for a double and triple block. We started buying in at 585.69, now up to 13, almost a double. Hero, we started buying in down here as low as 90.95. It's now up to 0.14. So a lot of massive, massive gainers for us, guys. And I alert all of these inside of my Telegram group in real time. You're going to get buy alerts with profit targets. For now, I'm only alerting Krypton patterns, okay? As I said before, I made so many mistakes by trying to please the crowd because I have a sizable YouTube channel, now over 3,000 people in my paid Telegram group, and everybody's expecting me to make trades. But if there's no fucking trades, I'm not fucking doing shit. I'm going on a fucking vacation and soaking in all the gains that I had before I give it all back, making dumb decisions. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope you learned some stuff and learned to see that I'm definitely not a perfect trader. I make mistakes all the time. I had a massive amount of unnecessary losses. And stay tuned for the next video. Hit the subscribe button because I have my top 10 lessons that I learned from everything, not only in my 17 year career, but mostly with my first year of experience trading crypto, because it's, as much as it is similar to trading the stock market, it's a whole different fucking beast, like nothing I've ever seen before. Anyways, guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. You got to pump it up, don't you know, pump it up. You got to pump it up.